What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a great day. So we are back finally in the shop after a long weekend getting back to the swing of things. If you guys watched yesterday's video, you guys know that I had some race parts coming in that we're going to show you guys here first. Then we're going to get to the uh, meat and potatoes, if you will, of today's upload. So first up, we have got our Lexan windshield finally came in. Um, the guys over at Fleece got us hooked up with this. The camera's gonna pick that up, but they are the ones you actually need to go through to get these Lexan windshields. They have, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it does have, it is molded for the curvature of the third gen windshield. So it's not just a plain flat piece of uh, Lexan, it is actually curved for third gens. They actually do carry second gens as well, but as we have a third gen, we got a third gen one here. This is actually tinted. I believe the front windshield, uh, the way that they make these and whatever else, windshields are 50%. So this has 50% tint built into the Lexan, and we're gonna bring this up to Bob. He's gonna actually throw this in. All the rest of the windows can actually be made from a flat piece. They're not really all that curved. Uh, we did Nolts, uh, Chris Nolts. Uh, we just use flat pieces. And then obviously the back window is completely flat and we will probably get a little bit darker tint for the rest of the windows, but 50% is more than good enough for the front windshield. So that's the first thing. If you guys do need one, guys at Fleece are the ones you're gonna need to see to get that. So second on the list is these Billet Sexy pieces of engine mount material. So these are solid engine mounts. The nice guys at Hardway Performance in Florida, I'm sure everyone recognizes the name. Uh, Mr. Ryan Milliken, he's the man. So they got these cranked out. These are actually, not sure if they're a limited prediction, production run, I'm sorry, but nevertheless, these came from them. I believe they were doing a limited run of them, so I decided to pick them up. Not that we needed billet engine mounts for the weight loss even though they are probably quite a bit lighter but we did want to go with solid engine mounts for the race truck so we decided to get those for them probably asking yourself man i wonder how light they actually are well lucky for you we have a set of stock engine mounts right here and we have the good old bathroom scale so we're going to actually weigh these out and show you the difference but just want to let you guys know really wasn't purchased for the weight uh savings but who doesn't like some weight savings, less weight that I got to lose to before drag season, but mostly because we needed engine mounts anyway, and why not get these? These things are really, really awesome. Very nicely made. So let's throw these on the scale and then we'll move on in today's video. The other thing I really like about these engine mounts is the hardware that they have. These aren't just normal Allen head sockets. The shoulder of this bolt is actually built right into it. So it acts as a washer and you guys will be able to tell these are 12.9 grade so they're nice heavy duty looks like this one might have actually been pressed in or i'm sorry the bolt was put in before this bushing was pressed in so we're gonna actually going to take one of these put that in there make sure the uh, weight comparison is fair all right stock engine mounts 16.8 i actually got to put the camera down so i can do them both at the same time otherwise it registers too quick so let's get the billet ones on here clear the scale okay 12.2 so a good couple pounds there very nice so they are in fact, lighter and a whole lot sexier, let's put it that way. So next up on the list of things to do on the tow rig, as you can see, the tow rig is in here. You guys know that we need to keep chipping away at the maintenance part. This truck has two, nearly 200,000 miles on it now. It is a G56 six-speed manual transmission, and we need to change the gear fluid in this beast. So we got the rear end taken care of when we did the brakes, we changed the rear end fluid. Moving up the line, we need to take care of the rest of it. So basically the transfer case, manual transmission. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We are gonna get started by draining the old fluid out of there. Uh, the G56 takes a 14 millimeter hex, Allen, whatever you wanna call it. The drain plug, I got the light going down there. Oh. 
little sci-fi action going on. The drain plug for that bad Larry is basically right there, right in front of the cross member. And we'll get that drained out, and I'll show you exactly what kind of fluid I use, how much fluid I use to really quiet down these things. These things are kind of known for a little bit of rattle action going on, but with the combination of a couple things that I've done, really haven't had any rattling issues, so that's what we're going to get to next after we start draining the fluid out. While that finishes draining, I'll show you guys what we're going to use and how we're actually going to refill it. So, the fluid that I used, I've been using since I first changed it, it is this Royal purple Synchromax is basically a uh, high performance manual transmission fluid yada 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 smoother shifts this is what I've been using it really helped quiet down the transmission I also know that Michael who I talked to not all that long ago he uses mobile Delvac 50 I believe and Amsoil actually makes a it's called MTG manual trans uh, gear something or other blah 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 so those are the three that I would probably recommend now what I do do to quiet these things down because they are known for a little bit of a gear rollover noise is everything you'll ever read tells you to put six quarts in it now what I do and what a lot of guys do and some people even run more but I always add one extra quart to make it seven quarts total I've heard of guys using two or three quarts overfilled now you're probably asking yourself why would you do that but there has been tons and tons of people who have done their research, who have kind of gone and dived into these G56 Mercedes transmissions, and they have found that it does absolutely no harm, but actually help and reduce gear noise. So that's what I've done, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've done a couple of these changes, but I figured this is the first one since uh, we started the channel, and I figured that might help some of you G56 guys out. So either one of those three fluids and adding seven quarts instead of the normal six should really really help now the other thing that I've done that was probably the best thing that I've ever done for my manual transmission and this Dodge truck is put a South Bend the latest South Bend dual friction material street clutch this thing has just been awesome it backs up trailers with no hopping it is so smooth so quiet um, honestly I would never I've actually put an uh, this I think this is the second one that I've put in this truck first one lasted roughly about a hundred thousand miles the second one going strong got a quite a bit of miles on that one as well and I just would not run anything else South Bend dual disc is honestly in my opinion the best thing for these trucks they are just so awesome I have nothing but awesome things to say about South Bend clutch so if you guys are in, in the same boat the factory it's called a dual mass flywheel there's springs in there that fail um, and they just make a ton of noise and yeah, I would probably say if you guys are going to get a truck that has a G56 trans in it and you guys delete it or tune it, the, the stock clutch is just going to be the next thing that you're going to have to deal with. So I feel like this is a pretty noteworthy modification to do uh, when you're looking at clutches. Get yourself some good fluid, overfill it, just one quart, two if you're feeling feeling lucky, and put a South Bend dual disc clutch in it. These things are just, again awesome awesome things to have so the last thing I want to show you guys you're probably asking yourself well how the heck do you overfill it um, let me show you exactly where the drain plug is on these things I'm on the passenger side here there it is not that bad right no big deal well look at where your exhaust is literally right next to this now I wish I would have known this the first time I went to go change this but just leave that leave that thing alone you don't you don't need to do anything with that what you want to do is you want to take apart your shifter area here. You want to pull this stuff out, and then this thing actually just pops out too. You want to take apart all these screws, and then this shifter boot here pops up. And then what you're going to want to do is just take apart this shot. The, um, bleh. What you want to do is take apart this top shifter boot area, take the whole uh, shifter out of here, and then you're just going to dump all seven quarts in just right from the top of the trans. That is the easiest, easiest way that you're going to fill these G56s up. So this takes about all of about five minutes to do. I will show you guys another thing that might actually hold you up here. Two seconds. I'm just going to undo this stuff quick. All right. So in order, here's your first step. Done. Done. One, two, three screws. This actually sits down in here, so you do have to pull this up slightly. Pull that up and out of the way. What you're gonna do next is two eight millimeter bolts, one 
and two right here. This piece will then slide out of your way. Then here's what you will see, what you're gonna have to do. Two 13 millimeter bolts are gonna take this top part of the shifter off. Then you can peel your carpet back. I did have to, I believe, I believe you trim back here. You're gonna have to, this is all connected from the factory. What you do is you just cut that a little bit slightly. You're never gonna see that when everything's back on there, but then that'll, what that'll do is that'll give you access to all of the, I believe six, maybe eight, little eight millimeter head screws that self tap down into there and that will give you your shifter base. And that is what I wanna show you guys. There's four bolts that hold the shifter base on here. They're Torx and they're a pain in the butt. Actually, I think they might even be inverted Torx. I can't even remember because I changed them out. I'm gonna show you guys as soon as I get all that removed. So once you got your shifter boot cover off, that uncovers your shift tower here. So a couple things going on that I wanted to point out, like I said, the factory shift boot here, this is not the factory one because the factory one is cheap, flimsy, and often tears, and then you will get a nice aroma of your gear fluid in your transmission. Um, so you need to replace that. Now this is a NAPA part number, uh, a quick Google search, you will find what this is, but this is a pretty generic shifter boot and we just have some worm clamps on there, top and bottom, and this is a much, much heavier duty version of what you have on there. Do not go to the dealer, just like anything else. They'll probably charge you an arm and a leg, and you'll be stuck with a factory weak design. Now, the other thing, like I mentioned, the four bolts that are right here, you can see I took one of them out. They have a M8 by 1.25 thread pitch, just like kind of pretty much everything in these trucks. Now, what comes with them is, I believe, an inverted Torx, uh, which is not, or maybe even a Torx, I can't even remember, but not the most common thing that everyone might have in your toolbox. So just one thing, if you're gonna change uh, your gear fluid, just like that big 14 millimeter Allen on the bottom, you're gonna need that specialty one to get them out. Now what I've done is I just swapped them out with this standard bolt because I've taken so many of these trucks apart. This is a much easier 10 millimeter head to deal with when you're gonna be doing this on a somewhat annually basis or however much you drive your truck, but um, I did swap these out. These are 35 millimeters in length, and that's the one thing that I just wanted to show you, one little quick trick to not have to deal with those Torx all the time. Alrighty guys, we're all set. I backed the truck out of the garage, that way it wasn't echoing so you can kinda hear inside here. I'll shut up for one second, you can kinda hear, well you guess you can't hear how much gear rollover noise you have. Very quiet, as like it was before. I'm gonna put my foot in the clutch, that way you guys can hear how quiet this South Bend dual disc is as well. That's it, you can barely tell. You can probably barely tell when I'm in. I'm gonna go, all right, I'm pressing the clutch in. I'm in. And I'm gonna come out. You can barely tell the difference. Extremely quiet, just like I said. I'll hop out, we'll listen to it outside. Probably can't even hear anything over the exhaust. Alrighty, so my intro decided to self-delete itself. So really the last thing I wanted to show you guys here was just a quick second of going through the gears and how smooth everything shifts. That's pretty much it. Hopefully that was helpful for a couple of you guys maybe who are maybe just starting out in the G56 world. That's going to do it. Hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you.